Hey, Jason Spears here with DrPreMed.com. I wanted to take some time to answer some questions, and I want to discuss today the situation with students who have a low GPA in undergrad, and sometimes that GPA is too low to even get into a post back program, and they want to know what are their options because they still want to get into post back program and then ultimately get into medical school. So obviously, the road isn't, all doors are closed. You can still get into a post back program, but you're gonna to have to do some outside the box creative thinking. And one of the things you need to do is, okay, you have this low GPA, and so you first thing you need to do is a lot of students tell me, well, Jason, I wanna get in, but I look at all the programs, and they say that you need a GPA of 3.0 or better. Yes, that's the case, but those aren't always hard and set um, cutoffs that schools have. So if that's the case, you need to pick the programs that you want to get into, and then you're going to have to make some personal contacts. You're going to have to either get on a phone or send an email to the school and find out, is this a hard cutoff that you have? And if the program tells you, yes, we don't accept anybody below, below a 3.0, then you know it's a program you cannot apply to because they're just not going to look at your application. Now, if some of the schools say we have some wiggle room, then you can go ahead and apply, but also need to be cautious of the fact that you still may not get in just because the numbers aren't where they need to be for the program itself. And so get on the phone, they'll tell you whether you can get in or not, whether it's worth your time applying or not. And then also, if you're kind of wiggle room, one of the things you may have to do on your application, they're gonna ask you, are there any extenuating circumstances or anything that the admissions committee should know about you when you're applying? This is a case to, this is the time to make your case of why you'd be a benefit to the school. And what you wanna do, you wanna spin everything in the most positive light possible. And unfortunately for students with low GPA, I find that um, there's extenuating circumstances, like they may have had a death of a relative, they may have been working, they may have had anxiety or depression. Now, obviously, these are good things, they're not things that you want to have going forward, and so you need to spin it in a positive way. You don't want to make excuses, but you want to say, this is going on, I was trying to handle my academics while also dealing with all these other extenuating factors and I don't think that this should limit my chances or preclude me from getting into your institution. I learned a lot from this and I want to move forward from that but I don't want this to be the end of the road. What you can't do, you can't make excuses or blame other people for your circumstances and your low GPA because the one thing that's going through our head is admissions committee when you see an applicant with a 2.5 2.6 we're just wondering why was this student doing this why didn't the student stop take time away and say okay I need to get my personal life in order instead of just trying to power through all these pre-med courses and have the GPA where it's at because that's just not good and it's not going to help your cause whether you want to get into a post back program or medical school when that happens because as one physician told me in medical school the thing is we need competent physicians who know how to think and know when they're over their head because they once at a certain point you're going to be in, a ch in charge of other um, staff members but most importantly um, other patients and so if you don't make good decision making now it's going to call into question your ability to be a good doctor who also needs to make those tough calls for your future visit for your future mm -hmm. patients so you want to make sure that's under control and you're not doing anything wrong there and what I want to encourage you to do though is um if you have that GPA and it's just too low, I know you may have taken a lot of pre-med courses and you were a science major. And so one thing you can consider is can you, um, one thing you can, sorry I'm driving right now so I kind of get distracted when you have other people on the road. But one thing you can consider is can you go ahead and 
retake courses. Sometimes it's going to be a lot that you have to retake and it might not boost your GPA. So before you go ahead and start taking courses to see how to get yourself improved to get into a post back program, get a calculator out. They have those course GPA calculators. Put in your current courses and just see how it looks for you from a number standpoint because if you're not going to have an improvement in your courses, then there's no point really going that route to take additional undergrad courses if it's not going to improve your GPA to get in. And now if you uh, know that you want to apply to medical school fairly soon and you know how long um, your post-bac program is going to be, then another route that would definitely get you a look by any um, post-bac program is going to be to do very, very well on the MCAT. But the MCAT is a task you want to take once and only once. So if you're struggling there and your GPA isn't what it needs to be, it might mean that you don't know the sciences in the way that you should. So I wouldn't encourage you to go ahead and take the MCAT just to get into a post back program because you want to do very well on it, especially with a low GPA. And also you need to consider the fact that MCAT scores do expire, so they're not everlasting. There's some schools that they are, but generally you're going to only have a two to three year window of how long your MCAT scores are going to be valid when you're applying to um, medical school. So if you're going to be the post back program for one to two years and then you're taking the MCAT a year or six months before you apply, you can already do the math and see you're running up, running up against the clock already and that might not be most advantageous, the best use of your time or resources if you want to get into um, into post back program to ultimately get into medical school. And I know a lot of people, you need to get into post back program because you want to get into medical school. And why you need to do the post back route is because I always encourage the students to, if you're pre-med, you're taking a lot of courses, you need to do a master's level post back program. They're called special master's programs because when you do this, you're going to take graduate level courses and this is going to give you a new and fresh GPA that's going to be totally separate from your undergrad um, GPA. So when you're applying in medical school, they're going to see the total, they're going to see the new numbers that you put down on your application. It's going to be separate from undergrad, and that can really boost you if you did well because they're like, okay, this person did like a 2.8, 2.7 undergrad, and now they got into grad school and they're at a 3.6, 3.7. But you have to realize when you are doing your post back, this. You have to protect your GPA at all costs. You cannot slip up. You cannot be marginal about your grades in grad school. And also have to remind you that if you get a C in grad school, that's equivalent to failing at a lot of programs. So that's something to be aware of. You need to do well. My um, physician mentor is an MD, PhD, sits on a missions committee. Protect the GPA at all costs. This is your only chance. So yes, I know I'm being harsh and very strict. And yeah, when you're post back and you're coming out of below a 3.0 GPA, you have a lot of things working against you. And so you can't slip up. And it very well could be the end of the road for your chances for medicine if you don't have the numbers that you need as a... Uh, a grad student when you're in a um, post back program trying to get into medical school. And one thing to consider if your numbers are marginal, what are you going to do after you have your post back or how the med schools look upon it? If I'm not sure if you're familiar with osteopathic medical schools, they offer the doctor osteopathic medicine. And one thing about them is when you apply and you have to retake certain courses, for medical school, the required pre-med courses, when you retake it, they don't combine or average or take the most recent. They 
they take the newest score and they use that. So if you do well, it will replace what you did in undergrad and that can really boost you. Like if you got a C in organic chemistry or a D and then you come back and you get like an A or a B, that's really gonna do well for your GPA. Whereas if you're applying to the MD schools, they're usually gonna average it or take the most recent one. I'm not sure each school's different in how they calculate um, repeat course work. So that's something that you definitely need to consider when you're applying to medical school and ultimately what you want to do. But what you need to do right now to get into post-bac programs with a low GPA is first, look, calculate your GPA, you most likely know it, and see what would happen if you would retake some courses or take more courses at the undergrad level because you might have to do that for a semester or even a year just to improve your numbers to even apply to a post back program if they have a hard cutoff. But if you're finding out that you're just not going to make any headway with your undergrad GPA, because it's just too low. Consider taking some grad level courses, biochem, your anatomy and phys, and that might be a way that you can do when you apply to post back. Say, so, yes, I know my undergrad's horrible, but this is some advanced coursework that I've done, and these are my numbers, so will, these, will you accept this coursework in lieu? And if the school says yes, then go ahead and make that an option or strategy that you can use for getting into a post back program. Obviously, this is going to take you a little bit longer than what you wanted to do, but it's going to give you some options, and you just have to know that regardless of where you're at, it's just going to be an uphill battle. But if you want to get into medical school, there are ways to do it. There are resources for wherever you stand as a pre-med student, and I want to help you out in any way I can. So definitely reach out to me at um, drpremed.com. I have some resources is available to you on the website so definitely go to the website and contact me there's things that we can do to help you get where you need to be again this is jason with drpremed.com and the door isn't closed you have some op other option avenues that you can work to get into a post back program ultimately get into medical school regardless of where you stand it's not going to be a straight shot route but let's put our heads together and do some out the box thinking i think i can really help you and get into medical school and realize your dream of becoming a physician. Take care.